My brother came home one day and said, yo man, I was walking down the street and I saw some cats on the street like gin. And then we, we all laughed about it, but I still did not consciously go in my head and think, that's our legacy. All I could think was, wow, they still doing the dance. We were just having fun. I didn't think that this, this legacy was gonna last this long and uh, still pre prevalent today. That's amazing. Three step your left. Lost in the sauce when I take lead like the boss. Rap first, then sauce 3D freeze like Jack Frost. You pay the cost, get dusted off. Y'all ready, man? Yeah, yeah. Um, That's dope, man. Okay, <laughs> we, we gotta see that uh, statue in the back. Can you see it? No. Okay. Do I need to come down, son? You're gonna walk with it, right? Yeah, you're gonna walk, so. You yeah. ready? Yeah. All right. All right. Tracy McGee of the Jitterbug. That's me, uh, choreographer. And uh, this spot right here, man, is what we call Heart Plaza. It's the heart of the city. And I mean, you know, back in the day, everybody, everybody came in the summertime to this spot right here. You see what I'm saying? Because we got food all over the other, all, all over the other area. We got food downtown in the, uh, down in the back, black bottom over in that area. And also food over here in this area. You can get your drink on for over in this corner over there. And I mean, back then in the day, man, that's what we did in the summertime. We came down here wishing to perform on stage down in Hot Plaza. Started working with Festival of Performing Arts, and we got our chance. Right over here, it's three arenas. Did that first arena right over there. It's a real hard stage, you know what I'm saying? Nothing but submit. So as a dancer, it was really hard. But uh, from, from that performance, we got another performance over here, in the downtown part, right down to the black bottom. We called that one, you know what I'm saying? We did that perfect beat. We did that Captain Rock. Ripped it, and the owner, the owner, the guy who's running this whole spot, Mr. Lewis, may he rest in peace, he saw us, and he ran over and said, you guys need to be over in the big arena. So nevertheless, we, we got the thing, we did the plan, we came down, he said we had much time as we wanted. So we did about five, six, seven, eight songs. Right here, man, we started performing one of the songs, it was called Go See the Doctor by Cool Mo D. Don't get us, man. We don't, don't, don't take our money, man. We just, we just speak your name. But nevertheless, right here, the people just started running, man. They started going crazy. And there was so many people out here at that time. The economic times wasn't that hard. It was a lot of people. It got so crowded that they started pushing. People would start falling a little bit right here. If you can see the little edge. People was falling a little scared. People were standing up all over the holes, all up on the ground, in the back, all over here while we was performing. Man, I'm telling you, at the time when we started performing, wow, it was like they treated us like we was real stars. I mean, the Jay-Z or Kanye West would have been seeing, seeing what we did. They would have been, you know, you know, the game has changed. It's all different now, but that night, we were the shit in the city. We were the best of the best in this city. And the first ever to come down here and rock the crowd the way we rocked the crowd. They even said it was a tale that there was so much traffic coming across the street from everybody coming from down uptown, coming downtown once they got here, that they were stopping traffic running across the street the night we performed. Because there's no boundaries, everything's free. So they said the people were just rushing in. And you know, if you think about it, you listen to the tape, you can see. And you can hear all the people. It was over 10,000 people. And we rocked that night. Man, I always want to perform here. Because if you perform here, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is, you know, they always talk about New York. Detroit crowd is the hardest crowd in the world. And if you rock Detroit, baby, you, you can rock anywhere. If you feeling me, I'm telling you, they will sit there. And if you ain't doing nothing, they won't clap. They won't say nothing. It'll just be quiet. They won't boo you. They will just sit there and look at you. But that night, Man, they treated us like we was the Jackson 5, man. I mean, they stood up. People was rut. They had a gate going around the stage, right? And it wasn't no, it wasn't no built stage. You know what I'm saying? They had some platform down wood. They had the, 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 the band. And we started performing. There was this gate. And once we started performing, all the people got up out of their seats and rushed the gate. So all the people up top was able to get in. I mean, it was packed, too. And we started rocking the crowd. You know, I was seeing people. But I wasn't, I was trying to concentrate on what we was doing. You understand what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, I see this girl over here, and she was screaming, like, you know, like I was somebody. I'm like, damn, we're really doing this. I mean, uh, we rock so tough. By the time we finished, they were standing up and cheering, and we left the stage, and they was like, come back, you know, do some more, do some more. I was like, all right, we'll come back, we did some more. When we came back, we ripped the house, uh, uh, we did the uh, roof was on fire. You know, and uh, it's on the tape when you watch the DVD, man. We ripped it. The crowd participated. You, you imagine hearing 10,000 people chant every word you say. Oh, man, it was a beautiful night, man. I'm getting goosebumps even talking about it. I, I mean, it was just real like that. I mean, you know, here, competition-wise, the reason why we got this spot, the 
The only reason why we got this spot is because of the performance we did over here. It's the small arena. We went over there and we was we went in, we didn't even think we was gonna perform that night. And uh, of course, you know, we messed around and started getting up, you know, doing things we ain't got no business doing. And we were about to leave the spot. And the man ran over to us and he was like, okay, y'all going on? And we was like, nah, you get ready to leave. I thought we was going to leave. I said, Charlie Waters. He said, nope, Carl, what's right now? Come on, let's go perform. But nevertheless, we did a song called Captain Rock. Oh, man, we ripped it. We ripped it so tough that people was hearing it and they was running down here packing this whole joint. You know, back in the day when the economic time wasn't so hard, woo, people used to come down here. And I'm telling you, when we ended up ripping it over here, that's how we ended up getting over here to the big arena. It was a real magical time, man. I mean, back then, life was good. Life was real good. And uh, the city, how you doing, man? The city was beautiful at the time. And, uh, there was no commotion, no fighting. You know what I mean? We, there wasn't no gang signs and all that stuff. We didn't do it like that. It was just all peace and love. Right over here at this spot over here, man. We really so tough, man. I mean, it was beautiful. If you had seen the show, I don't think we got no footage or anything like that, not even photos. But I believe that anybody who's watching us on the internet when we get on the internet, remember the show that we did down here at the Hunt, at Hunt Plaza, Captain Rock? We ripped it. And uh, I think it, it, it's, it's, it, made, it made it, put it this way, that put us on top. So once we got to that position and it sent us to that big stage over there, you know, from then on, we started having real gigs. We started doing all the, we had did all the backyard parties and all the clubs. And then we started hitting all the arenas. We started making money that we never thought we would make. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was a beautiful time, man. And, and uh, I, I know it's, our fan base is still there. They, I'm sure they're asking, what happened to the Jitterbug? What happened to the Jitterbug? That's why we're making this tape so y'all can find out. The best, the pioneers of the Jit is still alive. And that's why we're doing this tape right now, so you can see it. We got footage, you know. We got my man, Halloween, and my people, you understand? We're putting all this together. You feeling me? And I'm telling you, y'all gonna love it, man, because we got footage that nobody's ever seen. Ever. Ever. Right here, man. You come down here and get your fun on, get your eat on. But uh, it's connected right there if you look. You can see that's where the big arena is. And uh, we had a wonderful time performing down here. We actually performed down here at least two times after the first time, the first year in uh, 78. And uh, by the time the 80s came, got a chance to perform down here one more time. And uh, each time we performed, the people went crazy. I mean, it's kind of hard to even explain, you know, and it seemed like, you know, I'm not even, like I'm making this shit up or something, but I'm not. They treated us as if we were really someone. I mean, to the point where, you know, we signed autographs after shows, we took pictures with people, you know, I mean, and we, we never had a record deal, you know, we never had a record deal, we never, you know, hung with anybody who had a lot of money. Uh, the closest we came to uh, hanging with a rich millionaire was Tim Rice of Gail and Rice Agency, you know, Ford Model and all that, because we did the tour with the auto show with them. And that was the closest thing we got too far as that kind of money, because after those type of performances, you know, we had to go back home and adapt to our environment. And, you know, we come out here, we rip the show, then we go back home and watch them fight up on the street like after they get drunk in the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? It was just that transition. We had to adapt to our environment, and we also had to adapt to the stage, and the people loved us, man. I mean, it was a beautiful time, man. Oh, that sound! That sound in the, the ice cream parlor, in, in the, the Black Stallions parlor. It was a sound you could hear all through his whole interview. If this microphone's blocking out, you can't hear it. Then we're good. I'm just, I'm just saying. Can you I hear it. Okay. Yeah, like explain like what JIT is like to somebody that doesn't even know, and like start by saying JIT too. The JIT was created because one day I saw this group when I was a teenager, real young teenager, called The Lockers. I'm sure they was from California, Shabadoo and them. Messed me all up, because they was, they was the first dance group I ever saw. So, <clears throat> I didn't want to do what they were doing, but I wanted a dance group. So we started, you know, dancing. See, back in the day, we used to emulate the Jackson Five. So, somehow from their footwork, 
we've transitioned our own dance and style into the jit where we, 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 didn't, we didn't use our hips or, you know, we used just our feet. We would just use our feet and it was a gangster thing that we would do. You see what I'm saying? So that, you know, for the thugs, you know what I mean? For the thugs. And we danced for the thugs and the gangsters. And it got real popular in the city. And before you know it, the jit started spreading, you know. Girls started doing it. You would see little kids. It wasn't a time back in the 70s and the 80s that you would go in the neighborhood and see people up on the street like Jin having the battles. And it was way before the battles or the, the gangs, or all this crib walk. Oh, that's another thing. Crib walk came from the jit. Um, they got the, over in the Chicago, the juke, that's the jit. That's our stuff. All that came from us. So don't be claiming our steps over there, man. Y'all know how we get down in Detroit. We're going to have to come over there and put some hands on y'all. Do not claim our stuff. You know, back in the day, if you even stole our steps, we'd come up on stage and put our hands on you. That's just the way it was. So, all you cats in L.A. talking about the crib walk, ain't no crib walk, man. Somebody came from Detroit and showed y'all the jit. That's why y'all doing a crib walk. Same for Shot Time. What, 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 what you call it? The juke? The juke? Man, there ain't no such thing. It's the jit, dog. Stop stealing, man. Get y'all be original, man. Stop doing that, man. Get your hands on that. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just gotta get some practice. Thank you. Alright. Do it like this. What about that footwork he was doing in front of there? Like, like, like you're talking like that. Just focus on his foot. Nope. Does he want to do that again? You got it. Like you're talking, like you're making a point. Like, oh, yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? When it went back, shit, baby, you should bend this shit. Fucking tight, straight like that. I'm kidding you. Know? Another. Yeah. There's, an, there's a matter right now because we're going to cut. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be no talking over that. But let's get his, just a shot of his footwork of okay. what he was doing though, without the pen. That way we can cut. You know what I'm saying? Without the, without the, pen. Without the pen. Oh, yeah, just that right there. That's dope. Get that again. Don't show that one. Get that one. Oh, you want to get this one? Hey, you like that one, didn't you? Do it again. Oh, boy, y'all don't even know. And I'm an old man doing this. You young bucks. Show, show, show. Uh, uh. Go down this way. Then I'll go back that way. Do the same thing. Yeah. Wake up. Call somebody. Tell them. <laughs> Kitty's in the house, baby. Yeah. What about this yeah? Where y'all gonna put it up at? Yeah, man. You put your hands up right there. What up? What's up? JB, the heart of the city, right here, baby. You'll have more fun here than you can have in any state there is. Right here, heart of Detroit. Boom! So I get down, baby. We'll meet you over there. Yep. All right. To you, baby. Hope we can catch you down at the museum. We're gonna, we're gonna show the world. It's time, baby, for the world to see what Detroit's best that ever hit the city. Right here, JB. Later. We did a performance right here. Uh, uh, I can't even re remember the songs, man, but we did so well, you know, that 
as we're leaving the park, we're constantly shaking people's hands, taking pictures, signing autographs. This older guy came walking up to us and he said, uh, you guys are before your time. Um, there's nothing going to happen for you here. Everything is in California. Go west, young man. Go west. You know, we from working with the auto shows, we got a we got with an agent, and uh, we sent him our tape and everything. And he was like, "Please come, please come." But a lot of people don't know, man. You know, we broke, man. We had no money, man. Catch no train back then. You know, you walk where the hell you wanted to go. You know what I mean? You couldn't catch no cab. You had no money for that stuff like that. So to to relocate and go to L.A. You know, we had no people there. I didn't even know anyone there. A friend of mine moved there, but I wasn't going to go try to live with him, if you, if you feel what I'm saying. So, you know, uh, since all the entertainment left the city, like when Motown left, you know, it was hard to get a real deal or, to, you know, to get connected, you know, and so it's a real entertainment level thing. Because we had done everything in the city that you could do far as performance concerned. So, uh, I sent the tape to the guy in the agent, and uh, he said, come on down, I got all the work in the world for you guys. But at that time, you know, the money we had made, you know, we got tired of sleeping in other people's houses, and we got tired of, you know, living off each other. And at that time, we had enough money where we can get our own cars and buy our own places to stay. And uh, it was more important to have some stability, because at that time, you know, we were making money, but we wasn't making enough to lead a city. So... I guess that was really like a downfall for the Jitterbugs because we could we didn't have the cash, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's all good. We we successful in our own right because you know, like I say today, you know, 25 years then passed and our dance is still alive, man. That's gotta mean something, you know? Right after we did one of our best performances, we went home, right? And this is one of the incidents that we would have to adapt to in our environment. Uh, my brother, you know, he hanging out with some shady cats and stuff. So anyway, we up in the room listening to some Roy Ayers, drinking some beer, smoking and everything. And, all, uh, and everything. And all of a sudden, the lights went off, and then they came back on. And then I heard a knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. So I run down the stairs and open up the door to my man Phil. You know, he's like, man, Phil, gun, car. And he's pointing down the rock, you know. So me and my brother Jay, you know, leader of the group, we break down the street. We run down the street. We get down there. My brother's sitting in the steel gray Cadillac. He's slumped over the steering wheel. There's wires all over the car. And I'm scared to touch it because you can see the shit was live. You know what I mean? But that's my brother sitting there. I ain't have a choice. I touched the car, didn't get shot. Opened up the door, yanked him out. Took him down the block. He was bleeding pretty bad because he got a scar for life all the way across his forehead. So we take him in the house and he's like half delusional. He's not really realizing the severity of what's just happened. So I take him upstairs to the mirror and I let him see himself and uh, he just start crying. I'm talking about a real gangster because he realized he was totally tore up. And uh, after that, you know, the police trail his blood trail back to our house. Bammed on the door, boom, 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 boom. We didn't answer the door. And they had no warrant, so they didn't get in. So they hollered, you know, outside. That's okay. He got to go to somebody's hospital, and when he do, he going to jail. Sure enough, we had to take him to a hospital, and when we did, it was waiting for him. As soon as the head injury came in, the police popped up, they took him to jail, we had to go bond him out, you know what I'm saying? His friends, they had just robbed somebody, and they, some people was chasing him in the car, and that's how they ended up crashing and stuff. True story, man, but that's the life of the jitterbugs, man. That was the life of our, you know, that's it was some of the best times in our life, even though there was some tragic stuff that happened. It was a lot of beautiful memories. That was one. Perfect. Yeah, okay, perfect. Perfect. okay, one other story, man. Another story? Yeah, one other story. Which one? Another car crash. We got, 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 we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we are going to interview it again, though. He can get the story another time. As fast as you can. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, uh, okay, I'm talking about the story. Which story I'm talking about again? Oh, okay. So, at the one point, another, you know, we did this, uh, this gig and, uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it was in this, uh, uh, it's in this hall and, uh, it was packed that night. We ripped it, right? So, we leave and everything and we get, you know, to my house, and uh, a friend of mine pulls up with this old L, uh, Delta 88, drop top, blue, 
powder blue. And we all jump in, you know, and everything, and it's about nine of us in the car, so we end up pushing the lead man, Johnny McGee. We pushed him, my little brother, we pushed him out the car, along with another friend, Tricky Ricky. We pushed him out because there wasn't no room. Anyway, we take off down the street. We was going to the, to the motorcycle club, hang out, you know, do what we do. And uh, we get down on Plymouth, and we're on our way headed towards uh, Wyoming, going down Plymouth. And all of a sudden, this car pulled up on the side of us, and the guy that was driving our car, he was drunk. We didn't, you know, that's Mike. Mike, that's what Mike did. He liked to get his buzz on. So the car revved his engine, vroom, 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 and took off. Mike woke up out of stupor and put his foot on my brother. My oldest brother was driving. Put his foot on his pedal, wham, the car take off. Now we're going to assess at least 80, 90 miles an hour. All of a sudden, the car on the side of us just take off and make it through the red light. Now we're at least 90, close to almost 100 miles an hour when my brother hit the brakes, the car going to a spin. We slide up into a gas station, so boom, we get, all of a sudden, you know, I felt myself flying. I couldn't breathe, there was so much debris coming from the car. I was trying to breathe while I was feeling myself flying in the air. Then all of a sudden I felt myself falling. Next thing I know, you know, I hit the ground and they said I went into convulsions and the ambulance people came, actually they said we looked at like dummies you know, in a commercial or something, falling out of one of the car crashes or something like that when we hit the ground. And two of the members, uh, Stan and Tom, were so delusional, they got up because their clothes had, some of their clothes was tore off of them. They sitting at the bus stop like, what the fuck? This is what I'm talking about, how crazy it was. I don't know why they chose to get up and go sit at the bus stop, but that's what they did, because the it was a seat. So that's why they sat there. So anyway, we go to the hospital and, uh, uh, a friend of mine, man, named Steve Johnson, we called him the Green Eye Devil. He came in the hospital, he saw us all laid out, and he was like, he was kind of like, you know, the cat we looked up to. And he was like, uh, man, ain't nothing wrong with them niggas, man. Come on, man, let's get out of here. Get your ass up, man, get up. You know, we got up and left the hospital. True story. People who's responsible for Ready for the World was two ladies, they was attorneys. They was up in there in the Renaissance, we had a meeting with them. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I went up there deliberately because I knew they, they had put Ready for the World on the map. And they saw me, they thought I was cute and everything, so they told me to bring my brothers down. So I bring my brothers, but they didn't know we were so hardcore back then. My brother had been hanging out all night. So we get up in the Renaissance and we doing the meeting, right? Through the meeting, we start talking business and publishing and all this other kind of stuff. I look over, my brother is asleep like this. In a meeting, one of our most important meetings ever. He is asleep. James was something else. I mean, one of a kind. He's the only cat that I know. They could drink and dance like a jit, one of the best jitters in the city. I, I don't know people who could drink and dance. I mean, this cat could actually drink. And, and the performance y'all seen at Heart Plaza that you got on the tape? Bet you any amount of money. As a matter of fact, he was drinking that night because and when we got backstage, we got we almost got into a fight because I because I told him, I said, man, I told you to stop doing that shit. And he pointed his hand back in my hand and we started hitting each other. I was getting ready to kick his ass because he know we don't play that shit. There ain't no getting high. No doing nothing when he comes to performing. He, he, he broke all the rules. James broke all the rules. As a matter of fact, that's probably one of the reasons why you see me standing here now. Because of him. Because he was truly one of a kind. He was really like this gangster JB Jitterbug. That's my brother, big brother. Shout out to you, j Dog. Boom. And it was a lot of competition back there. It was uh, the Camelots, uh, the Keys, uh, TNT. Uh, uh, Hollywood Swingers, all the acts that I just named was the, the, was the competition in the city. And they banged. They came, we, we had a battle with all of them. It was the, that's when I knew we was the junk because we ended up being all of the acts that I just named right here. And the people went crazy, but I have to give it to them. It was tough because they was getting down that night. They was banging, they, especially TNT because they used to have this little boy in there. He'd tie himself in a knot and stuff, man. I mean, he was, he was incredible, man. But we came out. People just, you know, they just, they went crazy. And the phenomenal part about that is, you know, we worked real hard at what we were doing, and we never thought that the people would react that way. And they reacted that way every time. It wasn't one time that we did a performance and the people was like, no, never that. Every time we finished, woo, mo, 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 mo. True story, believe it or not, true story. 25 years and in some time back, even further back. Yeah, every time we performed, man, they gave it up, you know. I miss it. I really miss it. What year did y'all start dancing? I say, uh, about 1970. Wait a second, wait a second. Say we started dancing. Okay. Cause... We started dancing 1974. You know, by 1978, 
1977. That's when we did the McKenzie performance, uh, which I talked about on the tape. Man, woo, we killed that night. And by 1978, the year I graduated from McKenzie, uh, from then on, it was all about the gigs, man. We didn't, it was nothing else. We were just gigging throughout the city, you know, wherever we could and whoever. We did a lot of free gigs. And then in Klein, that's what got us some of our best, uh, some of our, you know, our money. Our, the money that we started making, the real good money, because of a free gig. Like we did a gig for a lady at WJLB, and uh, that's how we got to uh, uh, Tim Rice. She gave us a number. She didn't give us no money. She said, call this guy. I called him. I didn't call him. And then she called me back. and was like, did you call this guy? I was like, nope. She was like, call this man, Frank Gow. I called him. Come to find out, this guy is really an entrepreneur, very rich individual, and uh, he took real good care of us. We went through at all the shows in Chicago, uh, Miami, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Atlanta. We was, in, we was in Miami, a friend of uh, Luke Skywalker, before Luke came, you know, America's best. Uh, he sent this guy up there and he was trying to give us a record deal. He called our hotel room and my brother Johnny answers the phone, the youngest one, lead man of the group, and he's like, hello, who is this? My man was like, Luke Skywalker. You know, we didn't even know who the hell Luke Skywalker was back then, because he was no one. So. Johnny asked the phone and told, yeah, man, we're going to get with you, man. You know, we are uh, busy right now. We're working with the uh, agency, and uh, after this is over, we'll, we'll give you a call. Which was, uh, he hung up the phone, and I said, Jay, why you do that, man? That's Luke Skywalker. He's like, who is Luke Skywalker? True story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was Luke Skywalker, man. Hell yeah! I know that, but I'm saying, say that for the, the oh, young oh, kids. Oh, that, that was Luke Skywalker for the two live crew, you know. Uh, uh, born in America, uh, 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 shake that thing, a whole bunch. Y'all know who I'm talking about, Lou Skywalker. Come on, baby. He, he ended up being a very famous man. But the time we met him, he didn't he didn't have not one group that we knew of that was hot. I don't even think he had a hot record out, but he had just started his record company. So shout out to Luke, baby. You got busy, man. I gotta give you all the love.